In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily add some emailing functionality to your application using the send object method. Now, the send object method is part of the do command object, which is good news for you because it's basically a macro action. This is, can be done in something as simple as a macro. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to create very simple f emailing functionality using a macro with the send object method, and then how to parlay that into something a little bit more robust. So let's go ahead and get started by creating our first emailing macro. Let's say that in this application that I'm working in, I have a query that runs a weekly invoice report which shows all the invoices for the week. And I, I need to send this through email. And now, I don't want to export this to Excel, save it, and then email it on my own. I'd like access to do it for me if possible. So what I can do is I can create a little macro that fires off a little emailing uh, function that emails my uh, invoice report whenever I need to. So I can go to macros, hit new, go to action, and then I'll come down here and select send object. Now when I select send object, I have a bunch of parameters that I have to fill in here. Object type is the first parameter. Now object type, my object type is a query, but it could be anything. You, if you have a, a pre-made report that you can, uh, that you'd want to send out, you can send that out. You can cre send out a table. You can send anything from a table to a stored procedure. Uh, in this case, I want to send out a query. And then it's going to ask me what the object name is, and this is essentially the name of the object that you're sending. In my case, it's invoices. Output format. Output format, you have a lot of options. Uh, my option here is going to be Microsoft Excel. I'd like to see it in Excel. Now, the output format, what this means is that Access is going to send out an email, and the attachment or the object that I select is going to go into the email as an attachment, and the attachment will be in an Excel format. Now, two. Two is very self explanatory. This is who it's going to. MHA 105 here is. This is me. I'll, I'll send it to myself at Yahoo. Com. Now, if I have another recipient that I want to send it to, uh, I can go ahead and do that by putting a semicolon in between, in between the two. You can also do the same thing for uh, courtesy copy and blind courtesy copy. Subject, self-explanatory. Uh, my subject here is going to be weekly invoice report. And then message, uh, here is this week's invoice report very 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 simple okay edit message this is um, a setting that you can set to say if when you fire off this macro do you want to edit the message before it sends or do you not and I'll go ahead and hit no because uh, I'll just uh, let it go the way it is and that's it that's basically uh, I'm done I've, I've built my first emailing uh, macro I'll save this and I'm gonna save this as send my email Okay, and press OK, and then close this out. Now, I can start a new little form here, and then put a little command button on it. Right click on the command button, go to properties, go to the event property, on click, I want to call send my email. That's it, I'm going to fire send my email from this command button, and I'll call this send invoice report. All right, so we're ready to go, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this in a second to test it out. But uh, let me go ahead and say a little something about what happens when uh, you do click on this. Uh, Access will basically call your default email program that you've set up on your system as your default email program, and it could be anything. It could be Outlook, it can be Lotus Notes, it can be Groupwise, or any other 16-bit email-based program that you have set up as your default. Now I have. Outlook on my system here so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and you'll notice here that Outlook has this nice little security feature now our friends at Microsoft starting with Outlook 2000 uh, um, service pack and above have has put this service feature on it that basically says that if there's any kind of emails being sent uh, on an automated basis as we're doing here it's gonna ask us to hit yes or to confirm that we that we wanna basically send this so you're gonna have to hit yes your user if they have Outlook 2000 and above you're gonna have to hit yes so I'll go ahead and hit yes and this is what was sent. Uh, you see the email address here, your subject line here. Here is the week's invoice report. Nice uh, little message here that I put in there. And then the attachment, invoices attachment. It's in an Excel file. If I open up the Excel file here, 
you'll notice that it's basically the query that was run and it formatted very nice for me and it's in Excel. And that's it. It's sent. It's as easy as that. So with this one macro action, you can actually build in some very basic emailing functionality into your application with no code at all. And just use your imagination on how you can use this. Let's say you have a forecasting application. Some application where you require your salesman or your sales force to put in how much they're going to do next week. They can actually use an application like this, type in their numbers, and capture those numbers at a table, and then send this button, say send. And this sends out to uh, a manager or let's say you're in HR and you have to uh, fill, have users fill out a survey they fill out the survey and as long as the information is being uh, c captured in, in a table or a query they can send they can apply this macro action to that and then send the information okay so now let's step back and talk about how to parlay this into something more robust let's say that my requirements have changed and I don't want to send just the invoice report anymore I'd like to send each employee his own invoice report and so what I have here is instead of this query that I have that runs all the invoice reports I'd like to run this invoice report by employee and then send each employee his own invoice report so what I can do here is I can actually create a table called email addresses now this email addresses table has employee ID and email. My plan here is to use the employee ID from this table and run the query that gives me that employee ID's uh, invoice report and then capture this email address and then use that email address in my send object macro and then loop around and do the same thing for employee ID 2, employee ID 3, and then 4 and then go through my whole list of employee addresses. So let's go ahead and get started by building our macro. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to convert this macro to Visual Basic. So what I'll do is I'll click on the macro and go to Tools, Macro, Convert Macros to Visual Basic. And then I'll hit Convert. Once I've done that, I'll have a module here called Converted Macro, Send My Email, and I'm going to go ahead and open this up and it's going to have the line that makes up my macro and all this should look familiar it's a send object macro uh, it's sending a query it's sending the invoices query it's sending it in Microsoft Excel sending it, sending it to these email addresses here's the subject line and then here's the body so all this is familiar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, piece of VBA and build on it to make the functionality that I need the next thing I'll do is go to this form that I have my button on and I'm going to create two text boxes. One is an employee ID text box and one is for the email address. And for the employee ID text box, I'm going to go to the properties and name this uh, Q employee and I'll name the email address one uh, Q email. Perfect. And this form is called form 2, so we'll keep that in mind. So, I have a table here called email addresses. It's got employee ID and email. I have a form here called form2. It's got employee ID and email address here. And a button that fires the procedure. Next thing I've done is I've added some code to this particular uh, macro that we've converted. The macro is here and I've placed it into this rest of this code. And let's talk about this. I've basically started a new ADO record set and I opened up the email address table with this ADO record set by saying my set open email addresses. And now I'm saying uh, um, until we've reached the end of email address table, make the uh, Q employee text box in form 2 equal to the employee ID and make the employee email text box in form 2 equal to the employee email in the email address table. So I've called this first record up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once I do that, uh, call this send object command and then once that's done I'll go ahead and move to the next record and then do it again. This is the looping that I was talking about before so it'll go to employee ID 1, run the send object and then loop back, go to employee ID 2, run the send object and then loop back again. But there's a couple things that we need to do to make sure this works. I have an email address here hard-coded. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to replace this email address with um, forms form to Q email. So what this will do is it'll allow me to put in a dynamic email address uh, based on the record that I'm currently on in my email address table. So let's go ahead and do one last thing and then we can go ahead and test this out. In my query, invoices query, I currently have it giving me all the invoices, but this time I'm going to limit it to one employee, the employee that I'm currently on. And I can do that by specifying that the employee ID has to equal the employee ID that's in the Q employee text box of Form 2 by specifying Forms Form 2 Q employee. So now I've done this, I can go ahead and close this out, save those changes, yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some walking through of uh, the code here and just to make sure it debugs right. So we'll go to debug, step into, and I'm going to go ahead and hit F8 to go through this. Okay, so it's opening up the email address table, and it's basically saying that uh, my set, which is the email address table, uh, do until it's the end of file. And it's basically saying it's not the end of file. Forms employee value equals my set employee ID. So I'll go ahead and click F8 here. And so now, when I go back to this form, I should have employee ID 1 here. And I do. So now uh, it's saying that uh, em email address in the form to uh, form should equal to the first email address here. Okay, if I go back to form two, you'll see that it filled in. Now it's going to run the send object, and the send object is going to query the in invoices query, and that invoices query has the employee ID criteria in there that we just put in. And yes, I want to send this. All right, so now it's going to move next, go loop through, employee ID 2, next email address, and if I go here, you'll see that it changed the employee ID 2, and it went to the next email address, and again, it went through, and it's going to do that. And I hit yes. Okay, so we know that it's working properly. So let's go ahead and see this in runtime, and you'll notice a problem pop up here. Uh, we're going to send invoice report here. It's going through employee ID 1, and it's going to ask me to hit next. Okay, so I go through here and it's going to employee ID 2 and it's going to ask me to hit next again. Now, this is Outlook. Now, this is uh, the safety feature that they've put in here. Now, this is uh, put in here to avoid uh, any kind of viruses or any kind of emailing without your knowledge. But the problem is um, if you're running a routine and it has, let's say, 50 email addresses or 100 email addresses, you're going to have to sit here and hit next over and over and over. So what can you as a developer or a programmer do about it? Well, there's nothing you can really do about it by way of access, but there's a lot of third-party tools that you can use in conjunction with access that will help you get around this Outlook issue. The one that I use is uh, Express Click Yes from Context Magic, and this is a freeware. It's a very neat little freeware that basically runs in your system tray, and you can enable it or dis disable it. And when it's enabled, it'll basically uh, automatically click yes for you as you start looping through emailing procedures.